So here we are, all nicely soldered on. Our three motor wires on pads one, two, and three. And taped down with some electrical tape. The electrical tape just helps keep the motor wires nice and out of the way because they can sort of move about a bit, might get snagged in something. It's always good to, to tape or attach down somehow your motor wires. There are little sort of 3D printed bits you can get and all that sort of stuff. But on a little build like this, just some electrical tape will do the job nicely and keep everything neat and tidy and out of the way. So there we are, we've not bridged anything. We use this little magnifying lens just to make sure, just to check, really useful getting a magnifying lens, something like that. Just so you can see on these small little soldering pads, we don't have to bridge anything. We haven't done that, all individually soldered on nicely and no problems there. Now to be honest, if you can solder these pads on, there isn't much you can't solder on a quad. So this is a good way of practicing. We said use the board before, but once you get the hang of it and can do something like this, well then there's nothing really on a, on a quadcopter, apart from maybe some of the electrical parts you want to try and solder on a new FET or something like that. Really, really awkward. But apart from doing something like that, there's nothing really on any of these pads you can't solder if you get good at soldering these little pads here. So it's good practice. And when you move on to a bigger quad, perhaps building a five inch, it's so much easier. Um, it makes it a pleasure to do as opposed to just awkward and straining your eyes, which a little bit of this is, but this is such a good way to get started as we discussed at the beginning. So you can't really fault that. It's not perfect, but we're learning skills here and we're learning how to solder, which is excellent. Good life skill to have. So, Next, what we're going to do is we're going to be soldering on that XT30. This one has a capacitor already connected on it, which can help with um, electrical noise. So we don't get that in our picture. Um, but our VTX and camera um, can get electrical noise sometimes, so that will help with that. And also, you stop a, a massive power spike when you first plug in your LiPo, because that can cause a burnout of components, certainly in these cheaper, smaller um, boards. You can get component burnt out really easily with doing something like that so let's say these ones are really really good with already the capacitor soldered on so we've got the battery connected already because we want to do some measurements here so this is probably the light we're going to use a little 300 milliamp 2s high volt and we're going to have our uh, battery like that facing forward with the, the motor the wire sorry um, bent backwards so what we need to do now is basically don't plug it in, but position it there. Then we're going to attach with a cable tie uh, motor wire there. So we've got a bit of play to plug it in and unplug it. And we follow around, and then we can see exactly where our motor wires will go. And we just need to cut a little bit off so we can do that. So a really useful little tip there just to connect the battery to see where it's going to be. Do not plug it in, but just position it roughly together to see is that enough play? Would that be a bit too much of a stretch? You might want a little bit more a little bit more uh, uh, length there and then we can get a nice connection but do not do not plug it in at this point um, that would be really really bad um, if you touch the two wires together that can short out the lipo do all sorts of problems or if you touch something else and get shorts and all sorts of things so we don't want to connect that just yet um, so we'll do that there so next up we'll cut these and then we'll solder them on and then see what we're going to solder on next so we'll do that now then so that's all nicely connected up. Got our XT30 connected there with a cable tie attached, this bar along here, and that gives a bit of strain protection. Um, the same way that we don't want to get um, our motor wires snagged, so we tape them down, and so we don't want to pull off any of the pads. The same thing with the power wire, and that's more likely to be affected, say, in a crash. You, you might get a lipo ejection, it'll pull out there, it'll put pressure on the joint, and instead of pulling the pads and perhaps ripping them off on the flight controller, it's just gonna, um, the strain's gonna be stopped there by the cable type, it's being held down. So that can save our flight controller from being irrevocably damaged and we have to throw it away. So we'll just put that strain relief on there. And that's a useful technique, whatever size build you're doing, whether that's anything like this, little two inch quads, all the way up to you know five inch and beyond. It's always a good idea to have that strain relief on the, um, the battery power cable. It comes out of the, ESC or all-in-one flight controller like it does on this one. So we've done that now. We could power this up if we want to, but we're not going to. We're going to move on to our next job, which is to attach the VTX. So to attach the VTX, this one here is slightly different because instead of attaching only so three or perhaps four wires, we're going to attach all the connections of the VTX 
come off the VTX, then we attach the camera directly to the VTX. Now normally we just attach the uh, VTX to our 5 volt our ground and our signal out so that it can come out of the flight controller into the VTX and then be sent over the airwaves to your goggles. And then we connect our camera to the image in, which is what we have here, little I, which is our um, image in. And then we um, power the, the camera from either the VTX or we power it directly from the flight controller, depending on what pads we've got. And that's how we normally do it. So the, the VTX and the camera aren't actually really connected, perhaps apart from power. You might be taking the power from the VTX. But with this VTX, we can connect all of the connections, including video in and video out, and our um, connection for our smart audio, which is just there. It's quite a small pad, but it's just there. We connect all of that directly to the VTX. And all we have to do is connect to the VTX to get our OSD working, is to connect the, um, the camera directly into that plug there. And then we're away. So a bit more straightforward with our soldering with this particular VTX, but check what points are on the VTX and the corresponding points on your um, on your flight controller here. So we have G for ground, V for voltage, um, that's O, video out, I, video in, and we've got a little T, I think it says T1, well that's TX1 for our UART1 connection to smart audio, which is what's there. So we'll connect those three wires up, we can disconnect the plug, and keep that connected while we're working, disconnected while we're working on other things, and easily really connect it up. So we have to measure our wire position, measure our wires, cut them to length, because we don't want wires everywhere, and we'll solder that up. So that's what we'll do now then. So let's solder that up. So here we are. Our VTX is all nicely connected and soldered on, and it's waiting to go with the plug. And we're just going to connect that up to our VTX in a second when we put it all together. We've also connected up our camera to the cable that connects to the camera part here on a VTX like that. Um, we can solder each individual wire together. I've used a little bit of race wire. I'm not quite sure if it'll work or not. Um, the race wire is just like a printed circuit board um, with three connections and we just connected three connections to connect these two up. Normally used with motors but hopefully it'll work well with our camera. If it doesn't it'll be on the screen now to tell you that it doesn't but I don't know. That's uh, Richard from the future knows that answer but I don't know at the moment so it'll be on the screen if it doesn't work but hopefully it should do. Um, so that then allows us to connect up. Sometimes on the VTX you have just three pads and you can just solder the camera directly to those three pads but in this case we have a connector so we have to connect these two together. You can solder the wires individually but it's a bit of a pain and then you have to use little bits of um, heat shrink and all that sort of stuff. So this is probably the easiest way to do it with a bit of race wire and then covered in some electrical tape to stop any issues with it touching anything and causing shorts or whatever. So we've got that connected so what are we left to do to finish off this quad in our, in our build? Well. We're not going to put a buzzer on this, I'm going to use D-Shot command, so we're not going to be soldering that up. Not really any room for it on such a small frame. Bigger frames, bigger quads, a lot easier to find space for a buzzer, perhaps even a lost model alarm, which I'd highly recommend. Um, but on this little quad we haven't got space, so we'll use D-Shot commands and hopefully that'll be enough just to be able to hear where the quad is if we happen to crash and we can't see it. Um, so we're not going to put the buzzer on, but we do need to put on our, our receiver. This is a... Uh, um, FlySky receiver, um, so it uses the FlySky protocol, iBus, so where are we going to connect this one up? Well let's have a look at our pads that we've got. See our first pad here is uh, 3 volts, we don't need that because this receiver takes 5 volts, so we don't need that. It's for other types of receivers that are not as common but people still use them, so if you check your receiver, if it needs 3 volt, then it can connect there. And then we have a pad that hopefully you can see which says RX on it. So that's for UART2, RX2, it says RX2, you can see that there. Then that isn't 5, but it's in fact an S, and that's for S bus, and we'll mention that in a second. Then we've got what well, something is a 5, that's 5 volt, and then we've got ground. Um, so there are our pads that we need. If we're using an iBus receiver like this one, which is what most uh, the protocol, the most um, FlySky receivers use, iBus, we connect to RX2, and then we tell... Um, the flight controlled in beta flight that we're using iBus. If we're using SBus, we connect to this, which is an inverted pad, um, which is FR Sky normally. And we'll connect to that instead. And then in obviously beta flight, we tell it that we've connected to an SBus receiver and it knows what signal it's getting. So we just basically do three solder pads and then that's pretty much it for the soldering. Um, then we can start to put our quads together. So let's put those pads on now and then uh, see 
what it looks like there.